Okay, so we are going to be looking at the domain and range of quadratics. The first thing we do is to write a little template to remind us that domain always goes left to right. And our range always goes bottom to top. Um, that is going to apply no matter what our what kind of um, function we're doing. So, if we're looking at domain for example one, we're going to start at the left and we're going to find the first closest point to the left, which in this case is this one, and then go all the way to the right until we get to the furthest point, which is this one, and figure out what those x values are. So we have to look all the way down to the x and see what they are. So it looks to me as if the x's are going to be between uh, negative 4 and negative 6, which makes that negative 5. So there's an open hole at negative 5, and there is a closed hole at positive 2. So just like we did with the uh, linear, we're going to make our little chart for our domain, and then we translate those into our symbols. Open hole becomes less than closed hole becomes less than or equal to, and our two numbers. And now we can do our range. So we start at the lowest point, which is right here, and we go up to the highest point, which is right there. So our lowest point for our range is a closed hole because there's not an actual open hole. You, have to, you can see that there's something there, and that's in positive one. And it's going up to a closed hole at positive 7, 15, 17. So that means it's 1. 1 is less than or equal to y because it's range. It's less than or equal to 17. Okay, example 2. Again, domain, we're going to go left, right. So we're going to look for the furth left, leftmost thing, and that just happens to be an arrow. So I'm going to draw a big arrow, because remember, that arrow means that it just keeps going off the page. And then the last thing it sees is an arrow, so that goes to another arrow. So we have an arrow to arrow, which we know is all real numbers. And then for range, we start down here at a zero, and it's going up. And the last thing we see is arrows, so we put an arrow there. So it's starting at a dot at zero, going up to an arrow. And again, that means that the y is greater than or equal to zero and less than positive infinity, which again, we can drop the positive infinity part and say, you know what, I'm just going to flip it and write y is greater than or equal to zero because it's above the zero. Okay, the next two problems require using a calculator. Sorry, my cats are playing. Um, so it gives us a chart. You can just use a um, put use a chart and go ahead and do your dots. Um, so you would put the zero, zero, negative one, uh, zero. Wait, I got that wrong spot. This one goes there, that one goes there, one, zero, and then two, three. So you can see basically the shape. Or I'm going to show you how you can plug it into the calculator so it will show you the shape. Either way, now we have a shape. We can go our left to right, which again, arrow to arrow in this case. <coughs> Excuse me. So all real numbers. Sorry about the bad handwriting. And then our lowest point is at uh, negative 1, and we go up. Now, if we did not have a way to draw it, there is a way to look at the graph and figure out that y is going to get bigger than negative 1. The way to do that is to look at your number, look at your uh, points, and where does it look like it's repeating on both sides of a number? That is going to be where your lowest point or highest point is. And then look, are the numbers going up or going down? Well, in this case, they were both going up on both sides. It tells you that you're getting bigger than negative 1. Okay, so our next example 
required using a calculator um, or at least drawing a graph. If you had drawn yourself a T-chart and just picked five points, uh, generally you try to use 0, 1, negative 1, and uh, negative 2. Um, in this case, because we have 9 and 6, I would say maybe stick with going to 3s, <clears throat> 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, etc. If you wanted to do it that way. Um, but I am going to give you the option of using your calculator. So once I drew it on the calculator, we can now look at the domain and range. Domain is off the chart. So that is all real numbers. And that's going to be, again, the case whenever you see anything that's x squared, unless there is a dot or a hole um, stopping the, the graph. So that's always going to be all real numbers. Oops, wrong color. So for range, we just needed to see, well, where does it start? Well, it starts at y equals 0 and, again, goes to an uh, arrow. So we have y is greater than or equal to 0. Um, the next two pictures are, they just give us just a brief description, and they're talking about max and minimum. These are great because that tells us where our y starts or stops, and the maximum is always the negative, uh, the y value. So... We have at 2, negative 3, we have a maximum, which means that everything else, everything about the graph is below that um, 2, negative 3. So now we can say our domain is all real numbers, which again does not change because it's do dom uh, domain. The only time it's quadratic is all real numbers unless there's a, a written whole. And then for range, we can see that it starts at negative 3 and it will go down below because maximum is at negative 3. So y is less than or equal to negative 3. Our last one is talking about the minimum and the minimum is at positive 2. Um, so at 1 positive 2 you have a minimum which means the graph is going above that and that will tell us, again, all real numbers for domain. And that tells us that our range starts at negative a positive 2 and goes above it. So we have y is greater than or equal to 2.